escuchan. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I would like to talk to you about the range breaker scalper. This is a very quick kind of scalper. So basically it works on the idea that price ranges most of the time in Forex and even during a trend price will make smaller ranges and after that it will break out of that range and then it will continue along the line of the trend for the next few bars. The range breaker it will look for these kinds of ranges and then it will look for a breakout in the direction of the ongoing trend. And after the breakout happens, you can trade along the direction of that trend. And after that, it will find another range and another breakout and so on. Now, during a trend, price might also have certain ranges. And after that, the breakout might happen in the opposite direction of the trend. In that case, if you are using the trend conditions, then it will avoid those kinds of signals. And also sometimes the breakout bar, it is too long. This might happen especially during a news event. And after that really long bar, price might normalize itself by having a retracement bar. This indicator, it also has features to avoid these kinds of signals. Let's go back. So you can just go through these features and the free demo. This is available on my website. I'll share this link in the description below. This demo will have full features for one month. And I know that during December there will be a lot of holidays, which is why I have kept this demo till 10th of Jan. So it will have all the full features of the actual product till 10th of Jan. And right here, these are some of the extras that you can place on the chart to get an idea of the trend the volatility and the volume. Now this product, it has a set of two indicators. One of them is this arrows indicator and another one is this simple scanner. The default settings for range breaker, they can be quite restrictive, which is why you only get signals for a few pairs. And by default, the scanner, it will scan the past 100 bars. You can set that to a higher number but since this is a quick scalper, the newest signals, those are the most important anyways. So I would suggest that you keep the max past bars to a lower number. You can go over all the common dashboard settings right here in this page. So in this video, I won't go over all of these because these are pretty basic. And this post explains how to set up the different kinds of presets for your pairs how to set up your own pair list and your own preferred time frames and you can also set the columns and the positioning of the scanner and this part explains how you can get the different kinds of alerts so just go over this post i'll also link this in the description otherwise this link is right here under this scanner this scanner is also inside this demo zip file so the arrows and the scanner they are both in this demo and in this video my main focus it will be on explaining the different conditions for the range breaker itself and the scanner and the arrows they both have the same settings so their set files can be used interchangeably so let's get started with the range breaker itself now as i said before the default settings they can be quite restrictive, which is why you are getting very few signals. And you'll also get these debug messages to show exactly why a signal is being skipped. Let's go to the settings and right here at the bottom part. This is where you can show or hide the debug messages. So by default, this is true. If you set this to false, then it will hide all of these debug messages. Otherwise, you can just hide the individual types of message. This is for finding the range right before a breakout happens. These are the bull and bear power me debug messages. And you can also hide all of these filter messages, 
which show why a signal is ignored. So for now, I'll just hide all of these messages. And you can also look at the debug bar numbers. If you set this to true, then you will get the bar number so that if you go over the log files, uh, let me just show you the logs. Then even in the logs, you will get all of these messages on why it skipped a buy or sell signal. But the thing with the bar numbers is as new bars are drawn, these numbers will be wrong because it will only update the newer bars, which is why it's best to keep this false and only use it when you need to find the particular bar number. So let me just hide everything and just look at the signals. And there are a lot of checks that are on by default, which is why you don't see all the breakouts here. So let me just turn all of those settings off. Let me get everything in bear and bull power and all the other things are false. And also these higher height zigzag checks. I'll just put everything to false. Now you'll see all of these breakouts. So let's go over exactly how it detects the range break. And even before the range breakout, let me just show you what these settings mean. So max passed bars, these are the number of bars that it will scan for signals and shift. This is kept at one so that it will start the scanning from the very first bar because bar zero is still forming. Now these are the wait bars after signal before a new signal occurs. By default, this is at five, but if you want to see all the breakouts and if you keep it at zero, then you'll also see some consecutive breakouts like right here. It will look for the range and it will find all the possible breakouts so that you do not get consecutive, you know, these breaks. You can set the weight bars to whatever number you like. I'll just leave it at five and this prefix. It will use this prefix to draw all the objects on the chart, which is why it's best to have a unique prefix right here. Let's start with the actual range. Uh, let me press OK. So now we have weight bars. Now let's see how it actually detects the breakout. So it will look for these are the minimum number of range bars where price was ranging previously. And after that, it will look for this breakout bar, which should be at least three times the average of this range. To find the average of the range, it will take the open and the close of all of these bars and it will find the average height and the breakout bar should at least be three times that height. So if you are looking for these really long breakout bars, then you can set this number to much higher, like say 20 and the max length, you can change this to something like 40, perhaps 10 would be better. Then it will look for bars like this, which are at least 10 times the average of these past 10 bars. In case if you are looking for those really big breakout bars. And if you always trade towards the direction of the ongoing trend, in that case, you won't have signals like this one where price goes down and then it again continues with the ongoing trend. So let's go back and change this to the default values. So that we have all the possible breakouts. Now the next thing that you can check for is the bull power before breakout or the bearish power. So right before this breakout bar happens, whether price was already bullish or bearish. Suppose if you have 60 to 100, in that case, it will look for bull power should be between 60 and 100 for 
downward breakouts it will look for bear power pressing ok so it will now hide all of those signals right before that breakout it will look for these bullish or bearish power and if you set the bull power and bear to 0 to 100 in that case it will give you all the possible signals and if you set it to something really high like 80 to 100 in that case you won't get many signals you'll only get signals when the bullish power was very very high right before the breakout so i would suggest if you're using bull and bear power then just leave it to default 60 and if you don't want to use it then just leave it to 0 to 100 now next up we have tight range so right now these breakouts they will also look for all of these past 10 bars even if they are spread out like this over a trend but tight range it will only look for bars which are very close together so that the topmost part of the open and close and the bottommost part it will check the point distance between those two let me go back to my website and I'll show you what I mean by tight range. So for tight range, it will look for this maximum height. It won't look at these sticks because sometimes sticks can be really long. So it will look for the topmost part of the open and close and the bottommost part right here. This is the bottommost part of the open close and this point distance. You can define this tight range in your setting. So right here we are on h1 and h1 is 480 so if i have this check tight range to true and now it will only show you bars right before which there was a very tight range and the other part of that is atr that for the tight range the atr average should be lower than this and for the breakout bar the atr F, the atr of that breakout bar it should be higher than this now if you do not want to use the atr part in that case just set this to and the highest atr so that won't check the atr it will just check the tight range right before the breakout now for h1 we have 480 so it will look for this like right here we have 350 and this this is less than 400 but if you want really tight ranges so instead of 480 suppose if you have just 200 so that would you know skip signals like these and it will look for very close together ranges so this is helpful when you are looking for breakouts like these where price consolidates quite a lot and after that there is a very high volume breakout through that price and in case if it skips that a particular bar then it you will get these debug messages no tight that means that there was no tight range before the breakout now to find out what each of these debug messages mean just go to the product page and go to the lowest part of it and you'll find what each of these messages mean going back let me just change this back to we had 480 480 is pretty relaxed I'll go back and I'll just keep the tight range false for now if you have this false in that case it won't check these point ranges and it also won't check all of these ATR it will skip this tight range check altogether okay now going back these three checks NRTR moving average and this higher high and lower lows all of these they are to find out the ongoing trend 
now nrtr lines i'll just place the indicator on the dash so you can see what it looks like and these are all the default values so this is the default nrtr version and it will show you the ongoing trend for the current bar but you can also specify like right here if i have this to true in that case it will only show you signals where price is along the current nrtr direction but a lot of the times if price is not trending that high and it is in a range like this in that case you might get uptrend and downtrend and uptrend like that so for nrtr you can also use the higher time frame nrtr check like right here if you have the hdf check to true then you can specify the number of time frames you wanted to check if this is true it will check the current time frame and if this is true then it will check the next two higher time frames so h4 and d1 let's leave all of these to true and i'll just turn the bull and bear power off so we get more signals and right now everything else is false just we are just looking at this check so right here if you get just no nrtr it means that it's not aligned with the current time frame the support resistance lines and if you get no nrtr suppose h4 in that case it means that it was aligned with the current time frame but it's not aligned with h4 and since we have two nrtr checks it will also show you some d1 messages in case price is aligned right here price is aligned with h1 and h4 but it's not aligned with d1 so these can be pretty restrictive which is why you could maybe change this number to just one higher time frame in that case you will get all of these trends and another thing to note since this is a quick scalper always place very close stop losses so that even if your take profit is at least two or three times the stop loss even then if it doesn't quite hit your take profit it won't give you that much of a loss if your stop losses are very close to your entry point now with nrtr just like any other trend based indicator the main problem will be that when the trend actually ends like right here we have these blue lines and when the trend ends in that case you will have very few bars which are going along that trend and after that the reversal happens which is why if you are looking for those kinds of trends when everything has aligned then you can keep these checks to false and you can use ma stack instead if this is true then it will check that all of these moving averages have stacked one on top of the other and if you want really long trends in that case use something like 50 100 200 this kind of ma if you are trading along really long trends so this will skip all of these signals when price goes a little bit down and up and down like that it will avoid all of those ranges and it will only look for these kinds of signals or once price has already been trending upwards it will only give you signals after that or you if you use these smaller moving averages in that case it will give you even more signals but it will just establish that upward trend has started and after that you will start getting all of these breakout signals I have a link in the description below the moving average right here you can use this indicator this is a free indicator and all the others these are part of the MA stack demo but this one is fully free you can get it from this download link and it will show you all the moving averages stacked one on top of the other like this let me remove the nrtr the ma stack if you have show ma lines set to true and you can always set the moving average colors over here to anything you like and press okay then it will show you exactly when that stacking happens and it will show you all the signals after the moving averages basically with moving averages 
when m is stack one on top of the other and they fan out like this in that case the trend is upwards and if they fan out downwards like this in that case the trend is a downtrend so just check out this ma stack and i'll just put this back to false and the final thing that we have is higher highs and lower lows so whenever price starts to make higher highs or lower lows in zigzag so by default it has zigzag period 12 5 3 so i'll just and another indicator that we have for higher highs and lower lows this will give you the h h and ll counts if you need to visualize it on the chart but this one is not necessary for this indicator to work it's just a free indicator it might help you just look at these counts so whenever price is making this is one higher low and this is one higher high two three four so you can set that number in the range breaker suppose if i have if i'm only looking for really strong signals price should have made two higher highs for buy or two lower lows for sell in that case it will only give me those really strong trend signals right here this is the high low count indicator and 12 5 3 these are the default values so it will show you all of these count numbers and whenever price has made more than two lower lows only after that ll it will start looking for down signals to make it even stronger you can even have two lower lows for sell and also two lower highs for sell in that case it will start the signals after it gets two ll and two lower highs so just play around with these settings these will skip a lot of signals let me just remove this so the debug messages it will these will show you exactly why the signal was skipped it will limit these signals quite a lot but you will get those really strong trend signals and if i set this back to zero press ok in that case i will get slightly more signals but only once price has really found a downtrend or an uptrend so it will only show you those kinds of signals so these three settings nrtr moving average and these zigzag settings these are to find the trend i would suggest that you use only one of these otherwise it will limit the signals quite a lot and if you are not using this one just put these to zero for moving averages keep this false and nrtr keep this and this false in case you are not using those so these were for the trend and finally we have volume bars as well as volatility so by default it will look for high volume bar breakouts and it will only check for the strong candle volume if you have this indicator volume candles you can also find this on the website in the extras under the extras download right here this volume candles so all of these green bars these are high volume up bars and these blue bars these are medium volume up bars and for the downtrend these red bars these are high volume bearish bars and these purple bars these are the medium volume bearish bars so by default it will only look for these high volume bars and medium candles these are kept to false but if you also want to look for these medium volume bars then just keep this to true and if you want to remove this volume check altogether then keep this first one to false in that case it won't uh, look for either of these 
but i would suggest that you keep this to true to find those really good breakouts and finally we have the volatility check this one it will use the vada etr explosion indicator and if i keep this to true these debug messages these will show you that no wae that it has not found any vada explosions so i'll just put that indicator on the chart and these all of these default values right here so this yellow line whenever this histogram uh, it is above these yellow lines this yellow line is a trigger line and when the green goes above this only then it will look for the upwards breakout and let me go back to the settings okay so we have the sudden breakout multiplier that's why it is ignoring these green signals so multiplier is 5 times so basically what it means is if the previous bar uh, suppose let's look at one signal right here we have these green bars but no wae i'll just cancel this to get the crosshair tool now right here if this particular bar is at least 5 times its previous bar only then it will consider this as a sudden breakout if you do not wish to use the sudden breakout then just keep this to 1 in that case it will not use this multiplier and then it will show you all of these signals but if you want you know those really high breakouts where the vada it suddenly rose up in volatility in that case you can use this check to have sudden breakout multiplier if you have it 2 or 3 even then it will remove some of these signals and it will show you only those really high volatility signals so this wae it's useful to find when these breakouts they were very high volatility and when you encounter bars like this right now all of the trend checks are false which is why you are getting this signal but whenever you get these really long bars in that case it's best to skip that signal because after a really long bar price tends to normalize itself and there is a slight retracement especially during news events so just be careful of those kinds of signals i think i covered all the settings and another thing in vada you might note is this dead zone by default it is at 15 but if you want you know these really high breakouts in that case you can keep this to a higher number like keeping it to something like 50 Uh, make sure that this is the second one dead zone so keeping this to 50 and let me also change it over here dead zone at 50 in that case it will on, it will check for this these lines and it will make sure that it is its value is above 50 points right here it is 0.0288 so it should be higher than 0.0050 that's 50 points so i think we have covered all the possible settings and these all of these these are for the alerts and since we have shift 1 it will give you alerts whenever a signal occurs on bar 1 by default the pop up alerts are true and all the other alerts they are false you can also set the arrow distance like if you feel this arrow distance is too close and you do not see the you know open and close of these bars properly you can change this to a higher value 0.8 or 1 and then the arrows these will go slightly far and finally we already talked about the debug messages if you set the first one to false in that case it will hide all of these messages but if you want to hide 
individual messages like if you are only working on filters these are the filters you know these zigzag ma nrtr and these are uh, volume and volatility these are all filters which filter the actual range breakout messages and these will be the tight range breakout messages and these are the bull and bear power messages so by default you can set these to true true means you want these messages to be hidden so you can just play around with these debug settings and let me set everything to false also this volatility and I'll just use only one filter let me do moving average because this will be the least restrictive filter and ok so now I'll show you what kind of signals you need to avoid so the first thing that uh, we saw if you get a signal right here for sell and if you see that the bar is really long in that case it's best to avoid those signals the other kind of signal which you need to avoid is when you see that price is ranging uh, and price is in a very low volatility state in that case suppose if you have if you are also checking for really small breakouts like right now we have three times for a range bar of 10 so if you have this to a very lower number and the breakout the x times if this is also low then it will also catch these very small breakouts so I would suggest that when breakouts are during a very tight range in that case it's best to avoid those because of the very low volatility also sometimes if you see like right here when price is acting a bit erratically uh, I don't see it on this pair but if it's making really long wicks or if the market is you know choppy or price is jumping suddenly you might find that on some other kinds of pairs so when that happens you should also avoid the signals for those kinds of markets so once again reiterate avoid very low volatility signals avoid really long bars and also avoid sudden market jumps or you know when market is really choppy or it's acting erratically because this is a very quick scalping indicator and it is best to trade it during a trending market when market is making all of these smaller ranges so I think that's pretty much it I'll also just quickly show you the scanner I won't go over all the settings in the scanner because they are exactly the same as the arrows indicator and I already showed you the common scanner settings so with scanner it's best to keep max pass bars to a low number like 100 or 500 and this refresh after ticks it will refresh the scanner every 100 ticks and shift is 1 and all the other settings are exactly the same so if you make any changes in the scanner just save this to any set file like if I save this to one dot set yes and if I go to the arrows indicator if I load one dot set then it will load all the default settings I just press cancel and actually the default settings are restrictive so right now arrows has everything false so I'll save the arrows in the set file go to the scanner load the arrows set file and then I'll just change the unit uh, the prefix to something else in that case I will get even more signals so just play around with this uh, like I said before the demo is free till 10th of Jan 2024 I really hope you enjoy using this scanner and this arrows indicator and let me know in the comments below what you think of this 
and if you have any examples that you would like to share in case if you need to know what kind of signals you need to avoid just let me know and once again since this is a quick scalper keep very close stop losses so that even if a signal is not good you'll face very small losses and you'll get two or three times the take profit values so that will give you a lot more success so thank you so much for watching guys and i really hope you enjoy using this thanks guys have an awesome day